Hey, what's up guys? I'm Myron, owner of White Glove Auto, and behind me, we've got a 2006 Ford GT Heritage Edition. This is the same customer that we just did the 2020 Ford GT Heritage Edition for. We're gonna do the exact same thing to this one as we did to that one. We're gonna do a full body paint protection film wrap, only this one, we won't have the interior and we don't have the full undercarriage like we did on the 2020. This car does have some old, like factory PPF on the front bumper and on the rockers that we're gonna have to remove move, check out the process and follow along. We got a little Ford GT action today. I don't know if any of you guys caught the other video, but uh, we did a 2020 recently, and so uh, we have a 2006 here in the shop today. So 14-year uh, difference, both Heritage Edition, and uh, you know we're just doing a full-body PPF just like the last one. There is some pre-existing PPF on the front of the vehicle. To the naked eye, it is actually a little bit uh, yellowing. That's one of the, the issues that you might have with older PPF, uh, but we're gonna be removing that and replacing it with uh, Expel. Not sure what film this is, but uh, it's been on there for a while we think so let's just get right to it gonna start uh, getting this old PPF off of here I'm just trying to be real cautious of that first edge sometimes if you go crazy before it gets uh, too nice and hot you know you might you might be leaving glue uh, you, you don't obviously want to damage the vehicle you want to be extra careful and the angle is really important you want to kind of lift it up underneath it a little bit like I'm doing that tends to leave uh, less glue it tends to have less breakage, and it's uh, it's the safest for the paint. One important thing to note whenever it comes to removing PPF is you just gotta be patient with it. If you get in a hurry, that's when you might cause yourself more problems down the road. You might, might leave more glue. You just gotta be patient. This is the uh, end result of what was removed on there, as you can see very yellow that's just a sign of age and uh, you know maybe a little bit outdated I'm gonna get the uh, glue off of this with a little bit of rapid remover just an adhesive remover that we use here basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it on this towel instead of on the car it's really important to make sure that this does not sit in the edges that'll affect all the PPF that's on there it'll it'll never stay down and it'll actually ruin the glue side we want as little on the car as possible that's why I'm gonna be spraying it on the towel instead and then on the surface right here, I'm just gonna be rubbing it where needed. And you just kinda let it sit there, and then you can, uh, sometimes after it just sits there, it'll just wipe right off. So that's what we're hoping for. We don't wanna do anything more aggressive than we, uh, than we don't have to. So now that I've gotten as much of the glue off, I think um, was there, I am, uh, I'm just gonna go back over it with a little alcohol. I just wanna make sure that any of that adhesive remover is, is just gone. Uh, I'm gonna double check all my edges, make sure that when the PPF is on the car, I don't have to worry about it, you know, peeling back up or, or anything like that. And one thing I'm really concerned about is I wanna make sure there's no rapid remover in this edge right here, because if it gets trapped in there, that's gonna cause a super big headache for the material. Just trying to get it out of there, that, that edge right here is gonna fail and it's gonna ruin the whole piece. So we really wanna make sure this right here is all good to go. All right, so this is uh, all good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get the piece ready on the board and then we'll just slap it on there. So I'm just gonna get this, get this going, get this peeled off. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a little pre-spray here in case any dirt or contaminants can pull out of here. I wanna go ahead and use the gel to my advantage and get that pulled out of there. Then I'll do a quick rinse uh, before we even get started just to make sure that this is as clean as possible. So I want to let that sit so the gel can do its job. If you spray it in there, you immediately rinse it out. The contaminants might have not gotten pulled out from the recesses and the cracks and crevices. So I really want to make sure everything is just completely clean out of there. And sometimes to do that, you need to give it a little bit of time. Yeah, I'm just getting one last double check to make sure there's nothing on here. Sometimes on a flatter piece like this, where the, the piece is laying on it, I like to put a little extra gel in case uh, you need to slide around the gel. If it slides off, you know you're gonna deal with some things like pre-tack and stuff. This is a pretty easy piece, but still, you know, it's like you just wanna make sure that since it's laying flat on there, you don't have to pick it all the way back up in the middle and, uh, you know, try to fight like one little pre-tack mark where it, it uh, bit down before you really wanted it to. 
I'm just giving it a little bit of a stretch just to make it to these edges here. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm just gonna lock it in. I'm gonna pick this edge up so that I don't have a pre-tack mark. And I'm just gonna squeegee it right down like that. That's now locked in where I want that to be. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. Just gonna stretch it a little bit across this body line. I'm gonna tack it down. And then I'm just going to lock it in. If the gel gets into like any of the vents or anything, it's normally nothing to worry about. Um, it's water-based, so you're able to just rinse it out. You know, it's not gonna cause any, uh, any harm to anything that you're working on. So now I'm just rinsing it off, getting rid of this gel. Kind of want to just check my work, you know. Want to make sure there's no pockets of liquid built up. Want to make sure there's no contamination. Sometimes the best way to do that is you just got to rinse it off and see what you're dealing with. Also want to rinse out these edges. If you just leave the gel in there, it's going to get all uh, crusty. It's not going to want to go down. Want to make sure they're nice and, uh, nice and dried out. Want to get all that junk out of there. Pretty much it for this panel. We're just going to wait for these edges to dry. Sometimes if you try to tuck them too soon, it's not going to really adhere to the edge. So I'm just going to let all that liquid kind of kind of dry up and then you know, we come back a little bit later, these edges will just lay right down. Well, now that I got this PPF finished up over here, uh, we're gonna go on over to the tent. Hey guys, Nick with White Glove Auto. This is what we're doing today. We're doing the window tent on this Ford GT. We are gonna be doing it with our XR Black ceramic film, 15%, uh, and let's jump right into it. So first thing we're doing here, is we're gonna clean the window that we're gonna be installing. So what I do is I spray it with our tent slime solution. I'm gonna grab one of our bristle pads here. I'm gonna clean and prep the window with this and a razor blade. It's important to clean the windows thoroughly because every window is gonna be different. Some may have imperfections in the glass, things that are gonna show up in the tent once you tint it. So you wanna make sure to catch that stuff before you do the install. Razor blade now, make sure there's no uh, imperfections. What I'm gonna do now before I actually do the install, I wanna come on the outside of the glass and look at it and make sure that I didn't miss anything. Now I'm gonna do the install. Uh, what I do is spray it with our tent slime first, get the window all nice and wet, so that way when I grab the tent, I can slide into place. Uh, this tent slime is a water mixed with our Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo. It's basically just a soap. Uh, so what I'm doing here is making sure I'm not touching any of the edges because even though you clean the window real well and cleaned all the exterior surroundings, you can still touch something and bring in contamination. So that's one thing you want to make sure you're not doing. What I'm going to do now is take a squeegee, squeegee all the water out. Basically what I'm doing is getting all the water out so that way the adhesive sticks to the glass. So basically I'm going over all the edges and making sure all there's no fingers or anything popping up, any contamination, making sure that it's a clean install. Uh, so what I have installed is a dryer sheet. Um, it's what we use to shrink all our windows. The reason I have to shrink this window is because it's super curved and it's a fairly big window. So if I was to install it without shrinking it, it would have fingers and they would pop up and there would be no way for them to go down. So the fingers I was talking about, these are the fingers. If I was to tint this, it would pop up and you would see every single one of these. So what I'm gonna do is take a heat gun and shrink all these fingers down to where they form to the curve of the window. This step can go wrong uh, just being too fast when you're shrinking. Sometimes the fingers like to fold over on each other and create creases. So the best thing to do is to go from the top of the fingers down towards the bottom and just slowly work those fingers down with heat. If you go too fast, it's easy to mess up windows. Um, this is one of our services that like, it's not like PPF where if you make a, a slight mistake, you can pull that uh, material up and fix it. Tint, if you mess up or crease it, it's fairly hard to fix that. All right, we got the bottom half done. So now I'm gonna shift the window down so I can shrink the top half. Again, I'm just trying to get the form to the curvature of the window. Right now, I'm typically not trying to line anything up. I try and use this edge or a straight edge on the window to go off of to line it up so I can get the curvature that I want. A lot of people always uh, see us doing this process and they're like, wait, what are you doing? You're putting the tin on the outside? We're like, no, we're just shrinking it so when we put it on the inside, it fits correctly. 
All right, so we're gonna do the same process as we did on the quarter window. We're gonna clean it, make sure there's no imperfections in the glass, clean all the edges, make sure we have a clean environment to install our tank. I'm doing the install on this, just tucking it all in so that way there's no light gap like that. It actually shifted back over on me. But basically I'm pulling the seal up and then sliding the tin in. Now that I got that top edge, I'm gonna get the corners and make sure the corners are all sealed down. On the top, you wanna have a little bit of a gap because the window will roll up into the seal. And if it's too far up, it'll catch that seal and then rip, rip off basically. I got the whole top secured. I rolled it up the window and now I'm gonna do the bottom edge the same process. Basically, I have a liner here protecting it from touching anything and picking up any dirt. I'm gonna spray underneath the tent and then tuck everything in. So this process I'm doing here is actually called uh, two-stepping or two-staging. This is the process I do when it's a tight fit or the seal on the bottom we can't pull. So this is the only way you can get it on there with a clean install and tuck the bottom edges. So my squeegee, squeegee can slide. Uh, if you don't do that, your squeegee will catch up and you can possibly crease the window. Uh, you definitely don't want to do that. So I always spray the window so I can squeegee right through it. Uh, we put do not roll down window stickers to remind customers that uh, you want to let the window cure for uh, 24, 48 hours. My name's Nick with White Glove Auto. I appreciate you guys stopping by and uh, we'll see you on the next one.